But I love that last part. How can I help her understand? Viewers ask Studio 5 contributor Julie Hanks, what should I say? Straight talk solutions for those tricky relationship scenarios. Today on Studio 5. And welcome to Studio 5. We're so glad you're watching along with us today. Often here on the show, one conversation will spark another. So a guest will say something that will peel back a deeper layer or a different opportunity. And that is the case with our first big conversation today. A couple of weeks ago, I was interviewing Studio 5 contributor Julie Hanks. To prove a point, Julie kind of slipped into a role play moment. And her straightforward approach pretty much left me speechless. Take a look. You could say, you know, I, I know you care about me, but I'd love your advice when I ask for it. That would, that would be really appreciated. Oh, wow. That you makes know? me nervous just hearing you say that. That <laughs> takes courage It to does, say. but what, like, why is that so hard to just say what we'd like? Would you dare to say something like that to a someone you love? Should you say something like that to someone you love? We might feel slightly stunned initially at her bold approach, but usually Julie, always Julie, leaves us feeling inspired to more freely state what we need and say how we feel. So today, Julie Hanks is stepping in to help us all find the words. It's a conversation we're calling Ask Julie, What Should I Say? She is sitting in the hot seat, but she's not scared. No? No, I'm not scared. No, this is so fun. This is like, I'm so excited. You've taught us before, the more we use bold phrases, right, and honest language, the mm -hmm. easier it is to come out over time. Right. Right. Just straightforward and with an open heart. This isn't about hurting other people. It's about just being truthful. So, on, so often in our relationships, we're dishonest. We don't tell the truth. Which is kind of a shocking statement right there, to think that we're dishonest to the people that we love the very, very most. We want to be nice. Right? We're pleasing. And, right. We want everyone to be happy and we want to be liked. And sometimes that can backfire. Okay, we opened up the doors and our inbox quickly filled up. So we're calling this first viewer question, Manipulative Mom. A viewer wrote in saying this, I know my mom loves me, but she has a very difficult way of trying to manipulate me. She suffers from mental illness. I had a really candid conversation with her last month. I asked her if she could please not talk badly about me to other people. She flipped out, went into a rage that has lasted for weeks. I told her that I love her, and although I would like to spend time with her, I really don't have uh, to take the treatment that she was giving. Any ideas how to help her? Her understand what I'm asking. Obviously, mm. with the mental illness situation, that's kind of a unique, it kind of elevates it a little bit into a sensitive situation. Right. But I love that last part. How can I help her understand? There's only so much we can do to make someone else think differently or experience their experience differently. Right. So I think this viewer is doing a great job saying, look, this is, I, uh, this is not okay. Do not talk about me badly to other people. And so it sounds like her mom did not accept that and, and cut her off for a few weeks. And so part of it, I think, is just being able to be okay with that and know it's hard for my mom to hear boundaries and we're not gonna talk for a few weeks. There's a layer <laughs> of difficulty when it's, I think, an adult daughter talking yeah. to a mom because those dynamics she's still your mom at the end of the day right but that's the beauty of growing up is that even if it's your parents you get to draw the lines around how you will be treated we don't get to do that as kids because we need our parents to feed us and clothe us and <laughs> send us to school and all that fun stuff but once we're an adult we get to say this doesn't feel good to me and this is what I'm going to do next time if I hear you talking poorly about me mm -hmm. come talk to me like, don't talk to someone else, come talk to me. I love you, I know you love me. You can draw those boundaries differently. That's, that's why we get to grow up, it's so fun, it's exciting. It's exciting to grow up and get <laughs> It's big. scary, yeah, it is we scary have to take too. responsibility. The key in those boundaries though, I think is how you express the emotion along with it. There was kindness in that mm -hmm. structure. It wasn't just a straight nose, I'm laying down the law, you expressed I love you and I'm doing this out of care. That's probably right. important. It's really important and I, in, Almost all relationships, people are coming from a, a positive place or a vulnerable place. Rarely are people trying to hurt us. 
it's more survival or coming from their own pain. Yeah, important to remember that too. This next scenario, my neighbor is a mean girl mom. Mm -hmm. The viewer wrote in saying, I loved our new neighborhood until new neighbors moved in. The wife started making rude remarks to me like, why does my husband wear a pink shirt? She only says things like this to me. Now, whenever all the moms get together, everything is always about her. She doesn't stop talking. When I make a comment about something, she has something to say that's always better. I feel like she's constantly bragging. Please, Studio 5, help me and so many other moms out there to deal with that mean girl mom, which I think is a really interesting phrase, mean girl mom. Yeah, yeah. So what what I found is interesting, I, I don't see that other mom as a mean girl. I see her as probably really insecure and really scared and trying to find her way in a new neighborhood. That immediately reframes it. It, it does. And so instead of thinking, oh, she's trying to be better than me. Yeah. It, most of us are insecure and we, we want, we all have the desire to be loved and accepted and wanted. And so to reframe that in, wow, she's really having a hard time, mm -hmm. that changes everything because you can go, ah, oh, she's, you know, who cares if he wears a paint, you know, that's, it's not a big deal. You go from being frustrated to being compassionate. Right, a bit, to right. Her cause in her state of mind. Yeah, and that doesn't mean you just put up with, if she keeps saying rude things about your family, you right. can say, you know, you, you mentioned that and it kind of bothered me. Tell me, like, what's going on? Are we okay? Explore it, ask it. Um, or, it, you know, so often we just don't say anything because it's awkward, but you can say, what did you mean by that? I could take that a few different ways. You can question it. You can take question it. it. I like kind of that. Kind put it back on them, and then they have to go. Oh wait, it came out me, you know, or right. whatever it what was. Did they I can say? clarify. Okay. And then it gives them a cue that maybe you're just stepping over a line here. <laughs> I like that, Julie. We got a plea for help from a viewer who claims her mother-in-law treats her like a child. She said, "Since my cancer diagnosis six years ago, my mother-in-law has been treating me like I am a small child. She constantly tells me I need to go lay down, or tries to lift things for me, or tells me I shouldn't be doing things. She called at 8 p.m. last night and told me I should be in bed." asleep by then. She's the one who is frail and needs a lot of help. She's 75 years old. I know she means well, but she's driving me crazy. How do I help her understand that I'm fine and I'm not sick anymore without hurting her feelings? Mm. So I think it, that it's just such a touching scenario because obviously the mother-in-law, that's how she shows love is by checking in and telling yeah. people what to do. She probably has done that her whole life. Yeah. Telling people what, how to take better care of themselves. And so I think being really clear about um, how that feels and then what would feel better like and acknowledging the intent the positive intent I know you love me and you're worried about my health but I'm gonna reassure you that I'm doing okay here's what would feel really good to me is if you could call me every day and say you were thinking about me you're putting I, the words in their mouth right. at that point. and we're so reluctant to do that but it really works people want to be supportive but they don't know how mm -hmm. and they might do it in a way that feels awkward or uncomfortable for us and we can just coach people like this feels better you know call me at eight o'clock instead of asking if i'm in bed say i prayed for you today i was thinking about you today yeah I like it, Julie. We have two more. Can you stick around? Oh, definitely. We're going to bring Julie back later on in the show. But first, as I listen to your advice, my mind goes to your book, The Burnout Cure. I mean, you're teaching these relationship principles and these straight talk solutions on every page of that book. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fun, and I've had some good response to it. So, But I want to give our viewers a free sample download. Is that okay? That's a great gift, yeah. Ju uh, JulieHanks.com slash Studio 5. And there's just uh, you know 20 or so pages. You can sample it for free. Fantastic. I guarantee it will be your new relationship straight talk Bible, if I can call it that. You're very good about <laughs> know, laying out the law there. You're very good. Thank you so much. Thanks, we'll chat more with Julie. Two more emails that I'd like to get her take on. So a follow-up. One is a follow-up to a big conversation we had a couple weeks ago on friendship breakup. So stick around. More Ask Julie emails a little bit later on in today's show. We are picking up with the topic that kicked off today's show, a chance for you to get help navigating your awkward, uncomfortable relationship conversations. Studio 5 contributor Julie Hanks is known for her straightforward, valuable relationship advice. And today we asked Julie, what should I say? She is back to answer a couple final viewer questions. This first one is actually a follow-up to a conversation we had here on the mm -hmm. show a couple weeks ago about how to survive a friendship breakup. So a viewer wrote in and said, I saw that segment a few weeks ago about how to handle when a friendship breaks up. I have a friendship I need to let go of, but I'm not sure how to tell said friend. Can you help? Mm. This is worse than breaking up with your hairstylist. I mean, this it's is hard. way worse. Yeah. Yeah. Boyfriends, no big deal. Friends. <laughs> I mean, it's like, <laughs> okay. Um, straight, straightforward. Like this is not, this isn't working for me. 
and I need to take a step back. I and then remember the positive, like sure. I love you. I, it's just not working. Now, any girlfriend is going to press for more. They're going to say, what did I do? Or was there a situation? And we talked in this initial segment about a rift or a drift. Right. Do you need to identify why you're pulling back? It depends on how much you value the friendship. My guess is that she's writing in because she values the friendship. So yeah, I think it's helpful. We all need feedback about our part. So in a relationship is, is more like a circle than a, a line. So okay. we often think of it like you did this and so then I did this. It's really we co-create this pattern together. Okay. And so it's really helpful for people to go, now what was my part in that pattern that we created that's not working? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think talk about it. Be, be specific and give that feedback in a loving, open-hearted way. Even if that becomes, I know we're supposed to avoid you statements, you've had us up before, but even if that becomes you did this or you hurt my feelings. Well, it's, I felt hurt. Right. Right. But I you, felt hurt when you said this. But you are pinpointing a specific situation. Right. But you're owning that this is my experience. Okay. And that your experience may be totally different. Right. That may not have been what you thought you said or did. Okay. Brave words. <laughs> I love it. We have time for one more. Okay. This is from a neighbor who's having issue with another neighbor that recently moved in. Uh, the viewer wrote in saying, I installed a nice vinyl fence. Mm -hmm. And initially the neighbor was leaning against the fence, some items that were damaging the mm -hmm. finish. And then they had a horse they brought in, which mm -hmm. I realize is unique to the situation. But I asked them not to put their stuff against my expensive vinyl fence. They did stop doing that. But now they have their horse pushing and rubbing against the fence. I think and believe that they should put up another fence along my vinyl fence so whatever animal they want or can't get touch my vinyl fence. I can't keep affording to get new ones every time it gets broke or scratched up. Okay. What should I say or do? Obviously this is a little specific to their situation, but neighbor but, problems but this, in general. Right. How do you handle that when, yeah, so I, I think in this situation it's really important to convey to them what that fence means to you. So this is really, like we saved for 10 years or we spent how many thousands, like this is really important to us. Uh -huh. And I think when we convey that we value something, people get it more yeah. often yeah. than just like, stop, you know, you're so insensitive. We tend to criticize, but if we say, look, this fence was like 10 years in the making, we saved up for it. Could you, you know, could you be more cautious with that? Because I know it's just a fence to you, but for us, this is like a 10 year process I or whatever. I the idea of putting a value on it because they don't care. Right. It's just I'm a like, fence. I, I'm thinking, do I have, Things against my neighbor's fence. Do I, like, do I, this my I don't, I don't know have a, I have children that are probably running against it. Yeah. But like I, I don't value my fence. Right. But there are other things I value that other people don't. And so it's our responsibility to say, look, this, whether it's a fence or a car or yeah. whatever, this is really valuable. Will you treat it this way? That would be a gift to me. I love it, Julie. Thank you. We're going to have to do this again. I know. It's this so fun. This was very in interesting, informational, and fun at the same time. Thanks. If people want to carry this conversation further, maybe like into the therapy into session. The, <laughs> into the counseling There is an office. affordable way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We offer $50 therapy sessions, which is really inexpensive. Mm -hmm. And so go to WasatchFamilyTherapy.com to find out more about that. Great. We asked Julie. She answered. And we loved it. Thank you so much. <laughs>